Hello booktube, my name is Carrie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a collective book haul of all the books that I've gotten from August to about mid-October and I have quite a few to get through so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So to start off I'm going to go over ebooks that I have acquired. So to get started I picked up Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton. This is a fictionalized biography of Margaret Cavendish who was a um, really prolific writer and scientist during the um, 1600s and this was really uncommon at the time so she has more recently become a popular um, historical figure and this is just a fictionalized account of her life that I've heard really positive things about. Then I picked up Quicksand by Nella Larson. This is by the same author who wrote Passing. This is actually her first novel and this is more autobiographical. This is the story of a mixed race girl who is growing up um, attending a all-black school while being raised by her white mother and um, she ends up going on a family vacation to her mother's homeland of Denmark and really is forced to grapple with her identity and how she would like to identify herself as this mixed race woman. Then I picked up The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Zepetis. I don't really know anything about this other than that it is set during the Spanish Civil War and follows a photographer who is like visiting Spain during this time. I have a kind of issue with Ruta Sepetti's books where she is like an auto by author for me, but I've never read any of her books. I own all of them. I have them all on my shelves. I just haven't read any of them. I think I'm going to try to correct that with a book that I plan to read in December. And then one of my friends wants to do a like book buddy read for um, Out of the Easy, which is another one of her novels. So hopefully I will have finally read something by her because I just keep piling her books up. Then I picked up Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. And the only thing that I know about this is it's about a professor in South Africa who gets disgraced somehow. This next one is one that I'm really excited for because I'm going to be taking part in Indigathon, which is a readathon through all of November reading from Indigenous authors. And um, I have quite a few books planned out for that, but this is one of the ones that I was most excited for, and that is Sabrina and Karina. This is a short story collection about Indigenous women in the U.S. and specifically goes over themes of uh, relocation, ancestry, uh, domestic violence, and sex work, and I've heard nothing but amazing things about this collection. Then the final book that I picked up was Eichmann in Jerusalem by Hannah Arden or um, also known as a report on the banality of evil. This is a nonfiction book about the Adolf Eichmann trial, um, which took place in the 1960s in Israel. Adolf Eichmann was a Nazi who fled to Argentina after the war. And from there, he was captured and taken back to Israel to face trial for crimes against humanity. And this was a really controversial trial because his whole defense was that he wasn't actually killing people. He was just scheduling for people to be killed. And this resulted in um, Hannah Arden, who was a journalist, a German journalist who was actually a refugee during World War II and who immigrated to the United States just before the war really intensified. Um, she was sent there to write a report about this trial and um, her report discusses this defense that Eichmann tries to use and um, calls it the banality of evil in how these everyday things like making a train schedule when you know that the people on those trains are being sent to concentration camps, like how those little instances where people feel like they're not directly harming someone, but they know that the situation the person is in is harmful to them. And it was really interesting. I have read most of this actually in various classes that I've had over the years, um, but I haven't read the entire thing like front to back, um, so I'm really interested in finally being able to do that. Then I picked up a number of audiobooks, the first of which is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This is a full cast narration. Um, I will list all of the narrators, any translators or things like that down below in the description box. Um, but this has a full cast narration and I just recently realized that the copy of Little Women that I thought that I had read years ago was actually like a young adult adaptation, like an abridged version. Now I want to go back and listen to the audiobook because I do know the basics of this story so I don't feel the need to physically reread it, but I do want to listen to the audiobook and see if I enjoyed it as much as I like remember enjoying it at least. Then I picked up One Story, One Song by Richard Wagamese or Wagamisi. Um, this is another Indigenous author that I plan to read for Indigathon. This is a short story collection of his travels through Indigenous um, communities and lands. And I've heard that it 
is more of like a nature rating almost, um, which just sounds really lovely, um, especially for fall time. Next I picked up Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, translated from the Japanese, I believe, by Ginny Tapley Takamori. And I actually owned a physical copy of this book, and I don't know what happened to it. I had bought it whenever I was living overseas, so I have a slight fear that I may have accidentally left it with the books that I like was leaving there. Um, so yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Um, so I just wanted to pick up an audiobook to finally read it because I've been wanting to read it for a while now and just kept thinking, oh, well, maybe I've like left it somewhere here, but no, I can't find it. And this is the story of a convenience store woman who she started working at the convenience store when she was like 17 or 18 and has worked there for like the next 20 years of her life. She's very content in this. She, I am not really sure, I don't want to assume that she has like a disorder or anything like that, but I believe that it's hinted at that she is at least like somewhat on the autism spectrum and um, so the routine of the store is really a comfort for her, it's a safe space for her, it's something that she really loves do doing because it preserves this order to her life. And then this order gets upended by an incident and um, the young woman is forced to decide, well, what do I do now? And the final audiobook that I picked up was A Dead Gin in Cairo by P. Jelly Clark. And this is a like fantasy steampunk reimagining of Cairo at the turn of the century, I believe, which just sounds amazing. So now on to the physical books that I acquired through the month. So first I'm going to go over three books that I picked up at my local used bookstore. The first of which is Fascism, A Warning by Madeleine Albright. Madeleine Albright was a Secretary of State and also a U.S. Ambassador back in the like 90s to early 2000s. And um, this is a examination of fascism in the 20th century and how whenever we think about fascism in the 21st century we automatically think of figures like Mussolini and Hitler but there is a kind of problematic framing of that because in the 21st century it has made it very difficult to call out fascist rhetoric and fascist um, world leaders because there is such a correlation to what happened in World War II and Madeleine Albright is kind of fighting back at that and saying that we still need to be able to identify fascism in its more modern form. And if we can't do that, then we have a very big problem because we need to learn from our history, which just sounds very topical. Then I picked up a book that I was really surprised to see in like perfect condition at my used bookstore because I had just been talking about it with one of my old co-workers who loved this book and had been telling me, oh my god, you need to pick it up. Like it is just amazing and I think it's something you'd really enjoy. And that is The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. And this has an absolutely gorgeous cover. I don't know if you can see it, but there is like a neon and like also like brass or like copper colored um, embossing on the cover and it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is the fictionalized story of a women's diving group in Korea located on a small Korean island and follows them through the decades of um, World War II and colonization. And it's just kind of a small examination of this group of women and the bonds that they form through this sport that they love to do together and how they grow from that. And that just sounds so amazing. And then the final book that I picked up at that bookstore was Entwined by Heather Dixon, another really pretty cover. And the only thing I know about this is that it is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling, which sounds like it's going to be magical. Next, I picked up a couple books on Depop, the first of which is The Arab of the Future by Riyad Satouf. And this is translated from the French by Sam Taylor. This is the first of four or five volumes of um, graphic memoirs of the author's life. This specific volume follows him through his childhood in the Middle East from 1978 to 1984. And um, during this time, growing up his father was a really big pan-arab supporter and so they spent a lot of time traveling through Gaddafi's Libya um, and Assad Syria while he was growing up and it's just talking about like all of these experiences in these different countries and um, what was going on in like the region at that time and what it was like to live in all these places. I just want to do a little hint of the like art style because there's a lot of playfulness with colors in this 
um, like different sections have different colors and things like that. And I just find that really interesting. Um, I really love very colorful graphic novels. I have a really hard time with just black and white ones. And I first heard about this from Brown Girl Readings channel. She's read, I think, all of the volumes of this because she reads them in the original French and they take a while to be translated into English. But I have been hearing about this for years from her and hearing her rave reviews about it. Then I picked up Madonna in a Fur Coat by Sabatin Ali. This is a classic of Turkish literature and is translated from the Turkish by Maureen Freely and Alexander Daw. And this has kind of an interesting history behind it. So it was published in 1943, just a couple years before the end of World War II, but actually takes place in 1920s Berlin and follows a Turkish immigrant who ends up meeting and falling in love with a Jewish woman and this explores their relationship. And the history behind the author is really interesting because so he was born in Bulgaria which at the time was under Ottoman occupation and then he wrote and lived in Turkey for a number of years and then was killed attempting to flee Turkey after many years of censorship. So I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be more of like a social political work or if it's just going to be like a romance. Then I picked up a few books from um, local bookstores and maybe one from Target. Um, the the first book that I picked up was Steppenwolf by Hermann Hesse, which has this really cool, um, obviously like wolf fur cover. And this edition is the 1929 translation of Basil Crichton or Crichton's work, but it has edits apparently from, oh I can't remember now, um, from Joseph or Josef Melek and Horst Frenz. I did research before buying this specific edition and heard amazing things about this translation, but I just find it weird that it's like a translation, but then two people have edited it even more. But I read Siddhartha back in September and really enjoyed it, and I have a feeling that I'm going to enjoy Steppenwolf even more because this is more about the animalistic nature of human beings, and I'm really interested in that because that is often a theme in German literature as a whole. So I'm really interested to see Hesse's take on this since he incorporates a lot of like metaphysical and like Eastern spiritualism um, into a lot of his works. Then I picked up Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. This is the story of a young Jamaican British woman who is basically having a quarter life crisis and just trying to get her shit together. And I've heard really good things about it. Then I have Everything Inside, which is another really pretty cover by Edwige Denjica. And this is another short story collection. This is just kind of examining like important moments in people's lives, those kind of um, character study stories and these take place in Miami, Haiti, and then also in various small islands in the Caribbean. The final book that I have to talk about is probably the one I'm most excited for in this haul, and that is Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse. I finished Homegoing in the beginning of October, and I immediately went out to go buy this. This is the story of a young woman named Gifty who is studying to get her PhD in neuroscience. Her research specifically deals with people who are struggling with addiction and mental illness, and this is because Gifty's older brother accidentally overdosed, and since then her mother has been bedridden with depression. So Gifty is doing this research to basically try and figure out how to help her family get past this, how to help her mom, and that is a very heavy topic, one that I think is going to be a very difficult read. But in Homegoing, there is a um, there is a storyline that involves addiction, and the way that Ya Jesse dealt with that was just so marvelous. Her way of writing that was really not to judge the characters or make the readers judge the characters even. It was more to present the circumstances around it and why people are led down those certain paths in life and then also showing the very real effects of the family in the aftermath and so I have no doubt that this is going to be an even more amazing and in-depth exploration of that kind of story and I'm just so looking forward to this especially after loving Homegoing so much. I have a feeling that I will pick up anything that she writes next. And those are all the books that I have to show you guys today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you've read any of the books, please let me know down below. And yeah, happy reading. Bye!